Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Ken's TV and the house like kitchen sinks. You know, I respond to as many of my comments as uh, I possibly can. Sometimes it gets a little overwhelming because, you know, the, the channel is continuously growing every day. And I appreciate and salute and thank you to everybody that supports the channel. I check my emails, Real Ken's TV at Yahoo. And I get back with everybody that I possibly can. A lot of times people say, Real Kins, we love your stories, but could you tell us a little bit more about you, about yourself, more stories that, you know, uh, uh, that directly involved you? I do my best to try to switch things up because you have to understand that it's only so much that happens in life. <laughs> it's only so much that happens in prison. So sometimes I do have to tell other people's stories. Oftentimes, I don't use, a, when I'm telling another individual story, I don't, I typically don't use their real names. Every once in a while, I will. But nine times out of ten, I'm not going to use a real name. Why? Because as I've mentioned before, I have to walk these streets. You see, just because I'm not in prison anymore, I still see people every day that I was incarcerated with. So I can't afford to be making up stories because if I make up a story, hold on, bro, you weren't in prison doing that. When did this happen? When did that happen? Then it creates a, you know, a friction, if you will. Drama. I don't want to use a, a real person's uh, name if I tell a story about them doing inappropriate things in prison. And here it is, five, six years, ten years later, or what have you. They've gone on with their life, but yet I'm, you know, using their real names. That's just not what you do, in my opinion. So that's why I typically don't use real stories. However, this afternoon, I'm going to give you a story specifically about me. Now, before I do so, understand that I'm the self-proclaimed Mr. 30 Minutes About. Meaning that anytime I drop a video or story, it's guaranteed to be uh, a minimum of 30 minutes. So if you're on your way to work, you're at work, you don't feel like being there. You're on your way home from work, you need to laugh, you need to cry, you need to lay down, take a nap. Maybe you're trying to go to sleep at night, depending on whatever time you're listening to or viewing this uh, video. Or you're just in the mood for a good old-fashioned true keyword being true, penitentiary slash life story slash life experience, this is the channel for you. If you like your 8, 10, 12, 15-minute videos, absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Salute to you. But at Real Kens TV, it's 30 minutes or better. So with all that being said, there is a message. We're going to take this thing back to, I want to say about 2021. I had a vehicle that I was using, that I was driving. You know, I was door dashing and I was door dashing heavily. I'm talking about, I'm driving seven days a week. On Sundays, I might get out at about 6.30 a.m. and not come back into the house uh, till about 12.30 a.m. So basically 18 hours. Now, throughout the course of that 18 hours, you know, I might take a little break, you know, 30 minutes or so, you know, and just pull over for a little minute, just gather myself, give me something to eat. But the majority of the time I'm driving. Well, during football season, that was pretty easy to do because, you know, I got the uh, satellite radio or whatever. So I'm getting all the football games. I can listen to all the games on the radio. I get that from my grandfather. When I was a little kid, he loved to watch the Cincinnati Reds. Now, the Cincinnati Reds game would be on the TV in the living room, but he would sit on the porch with the radio and just listen to the game, especially when it rained. It had like a little cover over the, it was like a yawning over the porch. I used to be like, Granddaddy, why? Why you just listen to the game on the radio when you can just watch it on TV? It was just something about that radio. And so I guess that's why I got a... Uh, uh, a love, I guess, for listening to things on the radio. I decided, I said, you know what, man? It's time to get me another car. Even though my car was paid for, I wanted something a little better. This may not have been the best of decisions in the world. Car payments absolutely suck. But nevertheless, I decided to do so. Now, come on, Ken, get to the story. You being too specific, you, hey, listen, man. You want to go to jail, you want to go home. <laughs> no, nah, but seriously, you know, I have to paint a picture for you all so you know exactly 
what I'm speaking of. And plus, you know, the, the truck drivers and the people working the 18 hour shifts, 16 hour shifts, 12 hour shifts, eight hour shifts. They love it. Shout out and salute to all of you all. Much love, much respect, be safe, and just kick back and listen to Real Kins do what Real Kins does best. I decided I start, you know, to look around for a vehicle or whatever that I wanted. I really had intentions of getting an SUV. I was going to keep my car. There was no way I was going to trade it in. Credit score was, was pretty nice. I was at about a 700 credit score. I've been working on my credit for about two years. I'm talking about legitimately working on my credit for two years straight. Started at about a 500. At this point, I was up to like 702, 703, you know, nothing too significant, but it wasn't too shabby either. Pretty much get approved for whatever I want to get approved for, you know, within reason. End up getting a 2019 Chevy Impala. Loaded. Was nice. That thing was gray. Leather seats. Everything. Man, it was nice, man. I get the vehicle. Some days I would dash in my older car. Most days I would dash in my older car. This particular time that I'm speaking of, uh, the vehicle that I had, I believe it had it was having some work done to it. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was having some work done to it. And I said, well, it's a Sunday. I want to be able to listen to my satellite radio or whatever, listen to my football games or whatever. So I'm going to take the Impala out. Not taking the Impala out before. It's not like, you know, it was my first time taking the Impala out. I go out 6.30 in the morning, what have you. I'm driving, I'm dashing. I know that the football game started at 1 o'clock. So I'm going to take a break at about 12, 15. You know, I like to wager on the games, you know, little small amounts or whatever. Make sure my fantasy uh, team lineups is straight because I played in three fantasy uh, football leagues, which I still currently do, the same leagues. And, you know, just give me a time to relax, eat a little bit. It's about 12 o'clock, 12 noon. Maybe 11.50, 12 noonish. Because I remember the restaurant that I stopped in that was on campus. It was, you know, it was kind of crowded. A lot of the customers were coming in, you know, for lunch and to watch the football games. I said, I'm going to take this last order. Once I take this last, accept this last order, deliver it, then I'll go ahead and, um, you know, take my little break. Another order comes in from the same spot. So now I have two deliveries from the same restaurant. Nothing uncommon. It happens, you know, on a regular basis. I accept both orders. When I pull up to the restaurant, there's nowhere to park whatsoever. I'm looking around. I'm like, man, there is nowhere to park. Like, I literally would have had to have parked, like, um, so far and then walk all, all the way there to get the food and then walk all the way back. Well, being that I've been at this restaurant, I don't know, a million times, it seems. I said, I'm going to just pull right in front of the restaurant. After all, typically when I go inside, I grab the order, boom, it's already ready, leave out. I'm never in there alone. I pull my car inside. Well, I pull my car like it's kind of in the road. You know how on the left-hand side of the streets, you know, you'll have cars that are already parked. Well, I'll pull beside the cars that were parked, but yet I'm still out on the road. Have my hazard lights on. But once again, I'm still out on the road. I'm at the bar. And I'm looking, making sure that my car is cool because my car, I left it running. Don't ask me why, but I did. I'm looking at the car. Then I'm looking at the, you know, making sure, you know, that everything is straight with the order. As anticipated, I get the orders fairly quickly. I look over, car still there, no problem. I'm about to leave and I noticed that one of the orders was missing something. It was missing like some nachos or something like that. And I was like, ma'am, um, I didn't get the, uh, you know, I didn't get the nachos. She was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. I look over, car's still there. Probably takes her about two minutes to come back. Look over, the car's still there. She's giving me the, or putting everything in the bag again, rebagging it. 
So when she gives me the when she gives me the order, I turn around and I don't see my car there. The heck? I'm looking. I immediately rush to the door. I get to the door, my car's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere in sight. Where is my car at? It was just here. I'm asking everybody. They had like a little patio outside, like a little deck. People were eating. Because um, even though it was football season, it was still relatively warm outside. Hey, did you all see a, a gray Impala out here? Did you all see somebody get in a gray Impala? Or I'm thinking that a tow truck probably came and got me. After all, I was illegally parked. I'm on campus. Tow truck, it doesn't take that long. I've seen tow trucks back up. Whatever they, they do, the little lift thing or whatever, and then boom, be gone, just like that. I'm thinking that I got towed. Nobody around seen a tow truck. It seems as though nobody around seen anything. I'm asking everybody, has anyone seen a, a gray Impala? Did you all see anyone get into a gray Impala or a tow truck? Or No one seen anything. Panic sets in. I'm pretty cool, calm, and collective. You know, I don't really overreact to anything, but I'm, man, where's my car at? So I start to circle the block. I'm looking around. I still don't see the car. In my mind, I'm convinced that the tow truck took my car, but I know that they really didn't take the car deep down inside because it's like I would have seen it. I had just looked at the car. I called 911. Um, cause anytime a car is towed, they have to, uh, you know, report it to the police or whatever. They're telling me that I uh, probably campus police probably got you. I said, you know what? Yeah, they probably did campus towing rather not campus police call around nothing. Well, maybe they got me and it's not in the system yet. I'm walking all, I'm close to downtown. I'm walking the whole block. I didn't call DoorDash and told them what happened. My vehicle's missing or whatever. I took the food and ended up giving it to some homeless people or something. I don't remember, but can't find my car anywhere. After a while, I end up calling to the uh, uh, police back just to see if, you know, if there's been a report of a car that's been towed on campus. No, it hasn't. Now I'm convinced someone stole my car. Let me know where you uh, chiming in from. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. Y'all rocking with me? Let me if you rocking with me. Let me know where you chiming in from. Car's just gone. I feel like such a fool. Why would I leave my car running anywhere, any place, anytime? I feel like such a fool. Just invited someone to come in and steal my vehicle. That I worked hard for. I worked so hard to get my credit up. And boom. Trying to be optimistic. I'm bound to find it. Maybe someone, whoever took it, maybe they just went through it and, and you know, it, it's down the street somewhere or it's in the vicinity. I called my girl at the time. She comes. She sees that I'm visibly uh, upset. Had a lot of nice stuff in that car. I had my cameras. I had like four pair of designer sunglasses. You all see I always wear my, my sunglasses. I had like four pair of designer sunglasses in the car. They was in a bag. I kept everything like in a little bag. And it just so happens that I didn't keep that stuff in the car, but it just so happens that it happened to be in the car. I had some money, a couple hundred dollars. I had my debit cards, credit cards. I had like my little middle... Uh, console thing I'm not really worried about that stuff that can be replaced now I'm worried about my cameras you know my sunglasses and things like that but I just want my car back she comes and gets me we drive around for a couple hours three hours don't see the car anywhere we driving the whole city as far as places to where it could potentially be I don't see the car Lexington didn't have any known chop shops that I knew of. I'm asking around. I'm calling a couple people. Hey, man, my car is my license plate. It's what it looks like, man. You see my car, man. Just holler at me. Let me know. One day turned to two days. Two days turned to three days. I do the police report. 
I'm supposed to call and speak with the detective. I'm sure the detectives know who I am. They know who my name, you know. So it's kind of ironic now that I'm required to speak to them because anytime that I've called a case, I don't got nothing to say, man. I don't know what y'all talking about. What money? Who you talking about? I don't know nothing. Give me a lawyer, man. Those are the sort of things that detectives were uh, uh, accustomed to me saying. Now here it is. You need us. The detective's not calling me back. I spoke with him once. I never heard anything. While the car's missing, car payments still do. That don't stop. I'm so stubborn at the time. I'm like, man, I ain't making no car payment for a car that I don't have. I don't even know if I'm getting the car back. I missed the payment. Still searching for the car. Talk to the detective, but he doesn't seem like he's much on it. Well, you know, typically if the car's not located, you know, within the first 48, uh, 72 hours, you're not going to find the car. Well, aren't you all out looking for it? And it's your job to go out? No, that's not what we do. It's not TV. Basically, we just kind of sit here and we take leads. We take phone calls. And, and if we get some information on the car, then we go and look into it. Otherwise, that's all that, you know, there's nothing else that we can really do. Every day, we're driving around for two or three hours looking for the car. In the neighborhoods that I think that the car just may be in. A few weeks goes past, I still don't have the car back. Insurance company's ready to write it off. Total loss. I had like another week. If I didn't find the car, if the car wasn't located within another week, it's going to be written off. Total loss. Man, I need my car, man. Even though I have another car, I need my car. All the while, the bank's still calling me. I ain't made this car payment. I had a decent uh, APR. I think I was, it wasn't great, but it was like, 5.8, 5.9%. No, credit was pretty decent. I'm not really recognizing the fact that I'm messing my credit up by not making this car payment, by making this car payment late if I decide to make the payment. And you look up, I'm two payments behind. It's been about a month. The insurance company can't hold off any longer. He's telling me, listen, we got to go ahead and, and, you know, close this case up, close this thing up. My girl's driving one day. She's on the way to the, uh, I think she had a dentist appointment. If it wasn't a dentist appointment, it was a regular doctor's appointment. But I remember she was on her way to, let's just say the doctor's. Phone rings. I'm in the shower. I get it when I get out. I finish taking the shower. The phone rings three or four times. I get out. I see that it's her. I wonder what's going on. It's not like her to call me three or four times straight. I call her. Hey, baby. Your license plate? And she said whatever my license plate was, the last three numbers. 971. I said, yeah. She said, I just seen your car. I said, what do you mean you just seen my car? I literally just seen your car. I said, where? She was like, I was driving there. I was on my way to the doctor's appointment. I was on, I think it was uh, 7th Street. And I drove past and the, opposite, he was, the car was going in the opposite direction. So I turned around, but by the time I turned around... And, and, you know, fall through traffic, the car was just gone. That's the area that I grew up in. So I know that, that area fairly well. I said, listen, just drive around, see if you see the car. But if you see the car, if you happen to see it, don't say anything, don't do anything, don't even act as though you know anything about the vehicle. Hurry up and get dressed or whatever. I jump in my car, I go and meet her. I'm on the phone with her, so we're in the, the same area. We're canvassing the area or whatever. We're on the phone. And there's a trailer park. There's a Thornton's gas station. And there's a trailer park right behind it. She said, I think they may have gone in this uh, trailer park. I said, why you say that? She said, because where else would they have gone at? I said, baby, they could have gone anywhere. You know, yes, yeah, a trailer park here, but they could have. And I have an inkling. I have a strong intuition, a strong hunch that they went in this trailer park. All right, man, let's go in the trailer park. We pull in the trailer park. Actually, actually, no, no. Let's rewind that. I do the manual rewind for you all that don't know. She said, I'm going to go look in this trailer park. 
I said, okay, well, I'm going to go to this actual park and look in this area. But again, if you see the car, don't tip your hat. Don't, none of that. She goes in the trailer car, park. Probably about five minutes later. Baby, it's here, right here. I said, what you mean? She said, I see your car. I said, for real? Yeah, I see the car. Now, I'm not far from her at this time. I'm probably like maybe three minutes away. She said, it looks like two people's in the car. I'm going to block them in. I'm going to block them in. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Now, my girl's license. She has a, you know, concealed, uh, she can carry. No, don't. Just sit right there. Act like you don't even know nothing. Well, what if they drive off? That's cool, because I'm... I'll block them in. I kind of knew that trailer park. I didn't really know the trailer park, but I had been in that trailer park before, uh, you know, delivering food for DoorDash. I get there. She tells me, you know, which road she's on. Car's still sitting there. Okay. Okay. So I tell her, I say, listen, this is what you do. Pull in the front. When you pull into the front to where, like, she can't pull off. So, basically, she was parked on one end. She pulls in the front. I pull in the back. I pull in the back. She pulls in the front. I tell her to just chill out. She jumps out of the car. She's she's more rattier than me. I'm cool when I get out of the car. I got a baseball bat with me. Her son used to play baseball. And so he had his bat bag in the car while I was taking him back and forth to practice and games and things of that nature. So I grabbed the bat. She tells me it's two people in the car. I don't know what these individuals have on them. I don't know what these individuals are about. I don't know anything. Only thing I know is that's my car. And in hindsight, I probably should have called the police. But I'm really not a police type of individual unless it's just really, really necessary and someone else is in grave danger. And, and, you know, I get out the car, go up to the window. It's like they didn't even see me coming because the way that she the way that she pulled in in the front, it wasn't as though she was blocking them in. She just pulled up to where if they tried to pull out. Because it was on the curb on the right hand side of the, the curb or the street or what have you. If they tried to pull out. They couldn't go anywhere, and they couldn't back up because I'm blocking them in. Knocking on the thing. Yeah, can I help you? I'm like, man, get out of my car. What are you talking about? Get out of my car. The car was running. You could tell that she was looking to pull out, but she couldn't. As I mentioned, I had her blocked in. There was one other individual in the car as a dude. I don't know what you're talking about, man, but you better leave me alone. This is my car. I said, listen, man, you got about probably five to seven, eight minutes to get your stuff and get out of my car because the police is on the way. I hadn't even called the police. I don't understand. I bought this car. My girl, she's going off. You bought this car? B, you didn't buy this car. What a, okay, what a bill of sales at? What a receipt? What a title at? You bought this car? What a registration at? My girl's going off. I'm telling her to chill out. Chill out, baby. I got it. But she's she's going ham, and she's more calm than me most of the time. I can see in the car she done wrote her name all on the dash, personalized the car. She has all type of clothes, all type of stuff in the car. So you just gonna rob me from my own car? I said, listen, man. Once again, it's a it's a it's a woman. You know, it's a dude on the other side, but it's it's a woman, and I don't really. You know, I'm not trying to talk tough. I'm not trying to... Because nine times out of ten, she didn't steal the car. But yet, you know that this is not your car. And you just riding around as though this is your car. She gets out of the car. Opens the trunk. She got all type of stuff in the trunk. I'm talking about... Man, she got so many clothes. Jordans. Look like stolen stuff. It was all type of stuff in the trunk. They're gathering all their stuff. I go ahead and call the police. I want to give them enough time to go ahead and, and, and be gone. Even though they stole my car, I'm not with prosecuting nobody, anything like that. But I have to call the police to let them know that I got the car back. The insurance company told me immediately if I find the car on my own to call the police. I call the police. It's going to take them a little while to get there. 
she's getting all her stuff. But I guess she got as much as she felt as though she could get, and she was gone. I didn't even see her no more. I don't even know exactly where she went. She was just gone. So apparently, she lived in that trailer park, or she was from she was familiar with that trailer park. The dude that was in the car, he leaves. I don't see him either. Another dude ends up coming back out. He's kind of on some tough guy type. Now, what's the problem, man? My people said, you know, you took the car or whatever. Or that you trying to take that car. I'm like, look, bro. Look, bro. You ain't got nothing to do with this. Or maybe you do. I don't know. This is my car. How do you think that I have the key to the... I was so... Nah, man, this is my girl's car. This is... I was like, bro, I'm not going to argue with you, man. I'm not going to argue with you one whatsoever. So the two, you know, we kind of got to going back and forth. But I got this bag. Now, it's not like I'm, I'm swinging the bat at him or acting as though I was a threat with the bat. I just happened to have the bat. We had some words, but he know that the police is coming, so he leaves. Police get there probably two or three minutes after he leaves. I immediately have to call the insurance company because it was during the day to where the insurance company was still, you know, open. You sure it's your vehicle? Yeah, I'm telling him it's my vehicle. I was a day late, though. It was supposed to have been written off the day before. She found the car a day after. Well, if it's your car, then we can, you know, we'll make sure or what have you that, uh, I can, you know, I haven't submitted the claim yet or whatever. So, yeah, you'll be able to keep the car. Officers going through the car. I didn't even recognize on the other side it had two bullet holes in it. Car got two bullet holes in it. He finds a clip. He finds a clip with a bunch of bullets, two or three iPhones, brand new in a box, a couple of tablets. I'm like, man, I should have went through the trunk. Uh, <laughs> through the trunk. I didn't know all this stuff was in there as far as the iPhones and the tablets and some, you know, iPods and all. I'm like, man, I ain't even go through the trunk. They take all of that stuff as evidence. Come to find out, probably about a week prior. There had been a shooting right around the corner. The shells that was left at the scene, same kind of bullets or what have you that was in the trunk. Well, obviously, you know that I don't have the car. I didn't have the car. I'm thinking that I'm going to be able to just take the car and be gone. They have to take the car into investigation. They take the car into investigation, and then they had to do what's called a... Um, Man, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but basically they had to make sure that there was like, I think they had traces of like crystal meth that had been done in the car. So they had to make sure that none of that stuff was like lingering around and, and it was crazy. So they ended up keeping the car for another couple weeks before I got the car back. I'm talking to the lady at the bank, letting her know everything that's going on. I found a vehicle. I plan on, you know, making my payments and, you know, just trying to be transparent with her. Now, when the police came, they didn't know initially who this person was that had the car. But let me tell you how dumb some people are. She had put her name, her real name, like programmed it in the, uh, you know how you can like program your, your channels. She had put her name and her name was written on the dash. And they found a receipt. When they checked the receipt, it was from SNS Tire. She had just went and bought two new tires for the car. Like, literally, before we uh, seen the car, or my girl seen the car, 30 minutes prior to that, she had went and bought two new tires. They were used tires, but nevertheless, she bought them. She used a debit card. Police called, asked for the video. Yeah, we still got the video, whatever. So they knew exactly who she was. They take the car, as I mentioned. They keep it. It's in investigation, under investigation or whatever. I'm trying to figure out why this car has two bullets. Now, I'm very, very skeptical. Somebody's shooting at this vehicle. Unless this vehicle just happened to just be driving by and just inadvertently got hit. But the vehicle has two bullets in it. Two bullet holes. I finally get the vehicle back. 
once I get it back, the car's tore up. They didn't cut all type of wires. They didn't, but I get my car back. Call the bank. Like I said, I'm going to make my payment on Friday. I know I'm a couple payments behind, but I haven't had the car. Well, it's your responsibility to still be making these payments. And I shut up. Click, hung up. I make the payment on Friday. My girl comes in the house. It's like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, baby, I didn't know you was here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. She's like, well, where's your car at? I said, it's outside. She said, no, it's not. I said, yes, it is. It's right outside. I go look outside. Vehicle. My car's gone. My car's gone again? Obviously, no one's stolen the car at this point. The car. eBay came and repossessed my car. I called a bank. I'm like, why would you all repossess my car? I told you that Friday I was going to make the payment, and you told me that I, you led me to believe that I wasn't in any danger of having my car repossessed. Like, everything that's been going on, I've been in contact. Well, you should have still been making your payments. Guess what they blamed it on? COVID. Well, since COVID, if you get behind more than one month, we reserve the right to come and pick the car up. I'm heated. I am heated. I'm working with the insurance company. They're paying for the car as far as the damages or what have you. But they tell me that the items that's in the car, that it that's not covered. So my glasses and my, my, my cameras and everything is not covered. I'm like, man. But then they told me that it's covered under homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance, which I had. So I was able to get compensated for the things that I had in the car. I had the money to go and get the car back. It was going to be like an astronomical amount. Two payments plus all the fees. It was going to be like $1,500 to get my car back. Something crazy. I was going to get the car back. It was one thing that stopped me from doing it. They told me that because they came and repossessed it, it was going to be on my credit regardless. So even if I went and got the car back, I'm going to still have a repo on my credit. There was nothing I could do to talk them out of it, to try to work with me, to try to negotiate with me. I said, man, F that car, man. I didn't really want the car back anyway at that point. I had gotten my money. I don't know if someone's looking for this car. I don't know if this car had been involved in a in a crime, you know, uh, what have you. I don't know what happened. So I ended up getting a repo on my uh, on my credit, ruined my whole credit. I kind of regret how I handled that situation. Looking back, I should have just continued to make the car payment, but I didn't. And as a result, as I mentioned, I ain't never getting a repo on my credit. Police was calling me, you know, asking me uh, would I come down and, and try to identify the young lady and come to court. And Nah, man, I ain't even take their calls. After I spoke with them the first time, I ain't even take their calls. Y'all know who she is. Y'all know I got the car back, even though I don't have the car now. Quite sure she wasn't the one that took the car. They wanted me to look at some uh, some pictures because of the people they were using my uh, my debit card and things like that at the ATM machines and take a look at this person. Is this we figure uh, that we know who it is, but we just need you, man. You don't need me to do nothing. You all didn't even help me to get the car back. My girl at the time, man, I, I was so uh, I was so proud and so happy because if it wasn't for her, I never would have gotten that vehicle. Although it ended up going back anyway, I never, like, she was just a, a soldier, man. She was ready to pop off. She was ready to get out of that car and go ham, man. Do whatever. She was ready to whoop old girl that was driving the car. I'm the one, like I said, just telling her, man, just calm down. Man. Just calm down. We gonna, we, we, we good. Just, just simmer down a little bit. Never leave your car running. If you don't have an extra key to lock your car, if you, you know, do leave it running, never, ever leave your car running. I don't care if you're just running in the house and I'm a, especially in the wintertime, it's cold and you don't want, I'm just running in the car, uh, in the house and I'm coming right back out. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm not going to be in here long. Never leave your car running. 
with kids. Why did the dealership I only had one key? A lot of times when you get a car, they don't give you two keys to the vehicle until the car is paid off. Or like, for instance, my mom just bought a Lexus. My mom just bought a Lexus, and they told her that it's going to be about six to eight months before the second key fob will be sent to her in the mail or sent to the dealership. So for right now, she only has one key, one key fob. Different dealerships, I would imagine, do things differently. But a couple times that I've had to finance a car, I've, they've only given me one key both times. It was a sickening feeling. I feel as though I have been majorly violated, even though I was, you know, Ken's going to do work his magic or whatever. Now, when I say work my magic, as far as with the insurance company, yeah, this is what's going on. And no, we're not going to take it to your shop. Just give me the check and I'm going to take it over here to this shop. Yeah, I'm going to work my magic, which is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I don't have to take it to uh, the place that they want me to take it to. I don't have to take it anywhere. I pay insurance. So I made sure that they wrote the check out to me. They weren't trying to, but they did. It was just a terrible situation. And just, it was something that I did. I made a mistake. I put the blame on me. Me only, me solely. Because I should not have left my car running. In any area. I don't care if I was on campus. I don't. It was just a dumb decision that I made. And that to this day, I'm still paying for. Thank goodness that I know how to uh, uh, use business, start business credit, leverage my business credit. And once you get business credit, like an actual EIN number, an LLC, you get registered through Duns and Bradstreet. And you start to get business credit slowly, accounts and things of that nature. You would never even care about personal credit anymore. <laughs> business credit trumps that no guarantor when i say no guarantor it's not even affiliated or linked to my personal credit file two totally separate files but that's another video for another day or maybe even another channel been thinking about starting a uh, uh credit channel nevertheless like i said I don't care how fast you think you're going to run into a building and come right back out. Do not leave your car running. If you can't lock the car, you have an extra key. Word of the day. Real Kins TV. Hopefully you liked the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. Before I go, Kins, you didn't even tell us what happened to the young lady. I don't know what happened to the young lady. After I refused to come down and speak with the detectives, and 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 I don't know. I'm assuming that she probably got some sort of uh, probation or, you know, things of that nature. I don't know what happened to her. Best I can tell you.